blue back, yellow down, blue down, orange down, and that's how you design a parking lot. This video is based on AlgoMonster's implementation of the parking spots problem, so if you want to learn more or go into detail, check it out. In today's video, we're going to be designing a parking lot system using object-oriented design principles. If you're not sure what a parking lot is, here's some examples. They can even have multiple layers. When an interviewer gives you this question, the first step is to actually handle the ambiguity. So for example, what kind of vehicle can we hold? How is the parking lot designed? Is it multi-leveled? How is each level designed? Is each spot different? And if each spot is different, how does each vehicle fit in each spot? For this question, let's make the following assumptions. 1. The parking lot has multiple levels. Each level has a row of spots. 2. The parking lot can have motorcycles, cars, and buses. 3. The parking lot has motorcycle spots, compact spots, and large spots. 4. A motorcycle can park in any spot. Number 5. A car can park in either a single compact spot or a single large spot. And finally, number 6. A bus can park in 5 large spots that are consecutive and within the same row. It cannot park in a small spot. So just as with any object going to design, we want to start off with a high level class hierarchy. So let's do that now. We might start off with, for example, a vehicle. So here we have a vehicle class, and this is going to be a container for a bunch of information that we might have later on. Now with this vehicle class, we might have, for example, a motorcycle. And since this is a class hierarchy, we need to represent this with proper notation. So in this case, we're going to be using a triangle at the bottom of vehicle, and this represents that motorcycle is a vehicle. And along with a motorcycle, we might also have a car, for example, as well as a bus. Okay, so this is all fine and dandy. The next part that we need is the parking lot. So how exactly do we design the parking lot? Well, first of all, we're going to start off once again with a high level parking lot. And with this parking lot, what we're going to do is we're going to have a bunch of levels, right? Since this is a multi-leveled parking lot, it's going to be an array, right? It's going to contain an array of levels. So here we have levels. And what that notation means that one dot dot star, that basically means that there can be either one or more levels. And the black diamond, what that means is that the parking lot owns the levels. So that means whenever the parking lot is deleted in our program, the levels are also deleted. So the next part that we have with this level is, okay, well, the level needs the parking spots itself, right? So what we can do is we can create a parking spot class as well. And the level class owns the parking spots because the parking spots don't really exist outside of the context of levels. And so here we write with a diamond star and a level can have one or more parking spots. Now, how exactly do we connect these two? Well, very simply, we can say that the parking lot has zero or more vehicles. So this zero or more here, that's what it's saying here. Now let's write the code. First, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with vehicle size. And vehicle size is an enum, which can either be motorcycle. So it can be either a motorcycle size, a compact size, or a large size. Next, we're going to deal with vehicle. So vehicle, what this entails is we're going to basically have an abstract vehicle class once again, and this is going to contain the abstract information for a simple vehicle. So this is once again, a base class. And this is going to contain information such as the parking spots that the current vehicle is taking on, the license plates, which is a string, the number of spots that it needs, as well as the size of the vehicle, which once again is motorcycle, compact, or large. Next, let's just define some get for the number of spots needed as well as the size of the vehicle. We're also going to have a function called park in spot which is going to be void and basically what we're going to do is we're going to take in a parking spot and we're going to add that spot to the parking spots that the current vehicle is taking on. Then we're also going to have a clear spots method which basically says okay for the current vehicle what we're going to do is we're going to remove all the parking spots from this. So what we need to do is we need to say okay for the current parking spot remove the vehicle and along with that we need to say for the vehicle remove that parking spot. So it goes both ways parking spot remove vehicle and vehicle removes parking spot. And finally we have two abstract functions which number one is a boolean function which returns true or false whether or not we can fit in the current spot 
spot for the current vehicle. And finally, a print function, which just prints either B for bus, C for car, and M for motorcycle. So now let's define our vehicles specifically. So number one, we're going to start off with a bus. So with a bus, we're going to start off with a public class, which extends vehicle because it's a inherited class. We're going to define the constructor for a bus, which says that the number of spots needed is five and the size of the vehicle is large. We can define our can fit in spot function, which basically just says, okay, well, if the current size of the spot is large, then we can definitely fit in the current spot. And finally, to print the current bus, we just print a B. Now let's define car. So for car, it's a class car, which extends vehicle. Define the constructor, which just says that the number of spots needed is one and the size of the vehicle is compact. Define the can fit in spot method, which basically says, okay, well, if the spot is either large or compact, then we can fit in the spot. And finally, define the print function, which just prints C for car. Next, let's define motorcycle. So motorcycle is just going to be a motorcycle class, which once again extends vehicle. We define a constructor that says the number of spots needed is one and the size is a motorcycle. Next, we define the can fit in spot method, which basically returns true because it can fit in any spot, either a motorcycle spot, compact spot, or a large spot. And finally, we define the print method, which just prints M for motorcycle. So as with any object oriented design implementation, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the bottom most classes, the smaller classes first. So we're going to start off with a parking spot, and this is going to be a class which contains the vehicle that we're holding, the vehicle size that we're holding, the row number, the spot number, and the level at which the parking spot is currently at. So here we're going to define the constructor. This is just a very simple uh, constructor here. Then we're also going to have a Boolean class, which is whether or not the current spot is available. And we can check if this is available if the vehicle we're pointing at is null. Next, we're also going to have a function which is called can fit vehicle, which returns true if we can fit the current vehicle that we're passing in and false if we cannot. So what we need to do is first check if it's available and then also whether or not we can fit the current vehicle into the current spot. The next function that we have is a park function, which returns true if we can successfully park and false if we can't. So we're going to first check if we can't fit the vehicle in. In that case, return false. Otherwise, we know that we can fit the vehicle in and we're just going to park it using the functions provided in the vehicle class. We're also going to have a few getters for the row, the spot number, and the size. We're going to have a remove vehicle function, and this basically is just going to uh, remove the vehicle from the current spot. We also have a print function, which basically says, okay, well, if the vehicle is null, then we want to print out the size of the spot, and otherwise we want to print which vehicle is currently at the spot. So lowercase for the size of the spot and capital for the actual vehicle. So now let's define our level class. Our level class is going to contain a few fields, such as the floor that we're currently at, the array of spots, the number of spots available, as well as the number of spots per row. So let's first define this really big constructor here. And essentially what we're trying to do here is we're just trying to give an even number of spots. So a fourth of the spots are large spots, another fourth of the spots are bike spots, and the rest of the spots are going to be compact spots. And then what we need to do is basically just initialize each of the parking spots within the array of spots. And finally, we can say that the number of available spots is just the number of spots in the beginning, since this is just the constructor. We're going to have a function called the number of available spots spots, which just returns the available spots. We're going to have a park vehicle function, which takes in a vehicle and tries to park it in the current level. So we're going to say, okay, well, if the number of available spots is less than the spots that we need to park this car, then it's impossible to even park this car. So return false. So then what we need to do is find a spot number that is available. If that spot number turns out to be less than zero, then we just need to return false. The reason we need to do that is because we're basically saying, okay, there's no more spots available. And finally, we can just return true or return whether or not the park starting at a spot works or not. The next function we need is park starting at a spot, which is used in the function above. And basically what it does is we need to check whether or not the current vehicle is able to start at a certain spot and then park within the consecutive spots after that. So for example, the bus needs five parking spots. So we're going to start at parking spot one and check whether or not parking spot two, three, four, and five also are empty as well. So if those are empty, then we can say the number of available spots decreases by the number of spots needed and then return whether or not we successfully did it or not. The final function that we have is the find available spots, which basically loops through all of the spots and checks whether or not they're available. And that's pretty much the gist of what we're doing here. And then we're also returning the 
index of the spot and negative one if it doesn't work. And then we have our print function and this is going to print the entire level of spots and that's pretty much all we're doing here. Next what we have is the spot freed function which basically says okay when we call this function the number of available spots increases by one because we don't have a use spot anymore in this case. Finally let's deal with the parking lot class which basically encapsulates a number of levels and in this case it's going to be an array of levels with five levels in this case. So here we have a constructor which initializes our array and then within the array we need to initialize each level. So we're going to say levels i is equal to new level current level. Then what we're going to do is we're also going to have the park vehicle function which takes in a vehicle and what it's going to do is we're going to try to go through each level and if we can park the car or the vehicle in that current level and return true and stop from there and then otherwise return false because we didn't successfully park. If you're interested in reviewing the code and looking at it in different languages, you can check out the CTCI GitHub repository. And that's how you design a parking lot. If you want to see more of these videos, like, comment, share, and subscribe.